Hi, my name is Soleil and I applied to Kai's graduate school this year for spring and I got my results on 17th of December and in this video I'm going to tell you how I applied and how I got rejected or accepted so make sure to be subscribed and like this video to see the results of admission and let's begin are you in love huh? are you in love with anybody in your life presently yeah myself so hello my name is soleil well it's not my real name but it doesn't matter i've graduated from uh, ursan national institute of science and technology this year and i studied biological sciences and management and i was kind of like i'm specializing in uh, skincare care both in like formulation skin itself and kind of marketing and like yeah yeah and management so i got two degrees from unist biological sciences and management so i had more options to apply for graduate school and applying to kais was my first experience into graduate world you know and it was my my first and only for now uh graduate school that i applied to and of course i i knew about admission process but i didn't know exactly some specific parts because Kais is an academy it's like science academy so it's everything research based yeah so if you want to be a doctor like you know work in a hospital it's not a best place and i when i was applying i wanted to apply for biological like studies like related to skin but unfortunately i couldn't find any research lab in kais that is related to skin care like skin or hair like you know dermatology so i was kind of like upset because i really wanted to do like i want to specialize in this field and but i really wanted to study in kais since uh, since 2015 actually and i searched more and i found out that they have another campus so basically apparently they have two campuses and i didn't know about the second one first one is in Taejeon, the original one and the second one is apparently in seoul seoul and it is all about like business management technology ai so i thought wow i have a degree in management so i could apply for a business school since they do not have any research lab related to my field so i found this program called techno mba and it is about um entre entrepreneurs uh, who are working in like sustainability eco-friendliness like eco-friendly startups you know and i have a startup that is very sustainable and even circular we make circular beauty products honestly it's he you can follow and check it down below so i applied i okay now i'm going to tell you everything about application process and what was happening i even took toefl test for guys you know because i took my toefl test in 2019 so it expired by now uh, I took a TOEFL for graduation, so when you graduate, you also need this test result. So I took TOEFL right before KAIST applica like application started, I think in September or October. Yeah, I think, I think in September I took it and I got results that are required. I think it's more than 85 and I got it, more than 85. Uh, so I did that and I begged for, oh my god, I begged for recommendation letters. You need to have two recommendation letters, you need to have a TOEFL test, and then you need to submit some other papers. So I did my TOEFL, I begged for recommendation letter, one from my um, advisor from UNIST, uh, Professor Mitchell Roberts. Uh, he was my advisor for five years and he got tired of me, definitely. And uh, he has written a lot of recommendation letters for me, like for scholarships and some other programs. And I was a little bit embarrassed for asking too much. But then I was like, but you're applying for graduate school. Who else are you going to ask? Because that's the only person in the whole unit who knows you and what you've been doing for five years in the school. So. I dared and I asked and he wrote a 
good letter. I mean, I saw it. You shouldn't see, but then he sent me just so that I could, I don't know. So I saw it. It was really good. I actually got motivated by the letter that my advisor wrote. I was like, wow, I am, I'm cool. I'm, I'm super good. Like it gave me extra motivation to apply and to continue doing what I'm doing. Like uh, my skincare startup. So, uh, and you need two letters, right? So the second one, I thought, okay, Caius is like science school. Like it's all about science and research. But since I'm applying to business school, Caius has business school, then maybe I should get the second letter from business related uh, recommendator. And uh, since I am applying for a business school, it should probably relate more to business, like the person who's writing a recommendation letter. So I begged. <laughs> okay, I say beg, but then I don't, yeah, I was desperate. So I asked my employer. I uh, was working in Korean skincare company, XSY. I think now I can say it because <laughs> when I was a student, I couldn't, I couldn't say it. It, it was not illegal. It was illegal. Now it is legal because I have graduated. So I asked for a recommendation letter for my boss. She is the CEO of XSY. So basically, she's the owner and she, she wrote a recommendation letter. But then things got wrong because when you apply to Caius, they, they have specific application um, process, like admission process for recommendators, recommendee. Yeah, for people who write recommendation letters, they should submit and they probably need to sign up for the system and submit the, recomm the, the recommendation letter through the system, not through email, not sending me and then me sending them. No, they have specific system that uh, that a person should submit the recommendation letter to. And my professor is probably familiar with this kind of system, so it was not a problem for, he to, for him to submit. But my employer, my boss, she couldn't actually submit and it was two days she basically it was too late to submit and like she tried to but she couldn't so she sent them an email right before the deadline like two three minutes before the deadline and then um yeah when i checked my portal like my 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 page my admission page it said like your application is incomplete the second recommendator didn't submit their recommendation letter so if you do not submit on time uh, you will be rejected immediately. So we tried really hard uh, with my boss and she couldn't do it. We sent several emails to admission office. They were like, no, 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 she should submit through the system. And then I got really pissed. So I emailed them saying like, <laughs> you are like, I am really trying to apply to your school and your job is to help students like you know this is your job to help if there are some problems and they were like and they called me <laughs> because i was i think i was kind of rude and very aggressive so they called me saying like do you know what is happening do you know that the situation is like this um you couldn't submit it so you will be rejected and i'm like why are you calling me like shouldn't you help me instead like okay why like and the tone was kind of aggressive from admission office they called me and they were like kind of attacking me for me sending them emails you know so i was like why, why are you like being so aggressive like i am trying to apply to your school you should be happy that i am applying to <laughs> to your school like what is wrong with you shouldn't you help students and they're like okay we will make like an exception for you and i'm like yeah you better i'm joking like i was like thank you so much um it, it's really i i really appreciate it because like i i prepared everything you know how i submitted other documents so when um in like i graduated this february but i was not in school like in unis uh, for for one and a half yeah from 2020 i was in seoul so i was like studying online and getting my diploma they the school sent me my diploma right before i was flying back to my country and they didn't send me any of my transcripts and when i came back to tajikistan i couldn't access my portal my unis portal to see my uh, transcripts from my undergraduate school and i couldn't access because of like location 
So uh, in order for me to send my transcripts and some kind of certificates from school, I asked, again, I begged. I begged for uh, Tajik students who are studying there to kind of like, I gave them my password so they know my GPA, <laughs> they know all of my grades, they even know the results, they probably saw the results of my admission first before me. So I begged them to print out my transcripts, my, my certificate, my GPA and stuff like that and send it to Kaya's admission school, right? And I. And I also had my other documents, like my passport, copy of my passport, copy of my mother's passport, like other documents that are required. I had them in, um, in somebody else's dorm. So I asked them to send my documents to another person who will send everything to Kai's admission. So it was really tough and very like uh, irritating period for, for me to apply. And I did. And I received the results. <laughs> um, December 17th. So right before the results were like going out, I had really important meeting. It was really important. So I had to have a good mood, you know? And I was like, okay, I'm gonna get my results and be like, oh, I'm so happy I got accepted. But no, the reality is that I was rejected. Yeah, yes, I was rejected. Uh, at first, I was, of course, I was like sad. But since I had a meeting, I had to like, you know, consume all of my sadness and kind of concentrate on my really important meeting. So I kind of like let it go. Basically, when I get angry or sad, I need some two, three days to kind of come up to my senses. After two or three days, I was kind of shocked. I'm like, I'm so qualified. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I am confident. Maybe I am overconfident. But I think, except for my low GPA, which is really low, believe me, I was like, there is nothing else that could stop me for being accepted to KAIST. Even though it's like top one, like top 10 school in Korea and maybe even in the world. So I was like... I emailed them on 17th we got results and since I was sad usually when I'm sad I consume like I overeat and then I overwatch movies so on 18th I went and I watched spider-man no way home it was amazing actually uh, it's not a spoiler because the movie was really good so I kind of like released all of my sadness uh, and in the movie dr. strange was like when when you know uh when those kids the spider-man and his friends applied to mit they got rejected so it really it it, it really hit me hard because i was also rejected from kai's which is kind of mit of korea and <laughs> and dr strange was like did you like talk to admission office did you email them asking like if you if they can give you like second chance or something like something like that he said and I was like, just like Spider-Man, I was like, no, you could do that? And he was upset. I mean, he was really angry. And I was like, oops, now I need to email. So I waited for like one more day because it was Sunday. So I emailed them like saying this kind of things. And I was like, uh, maybe there was some kind of mistake. Maybe my recommendation letter that was not in the system was not accepted. Indeed, even though they said that they will accept it. Maybe, maybe this was the problem. Um, yeah, I know my GPA is low, but I don't think that's the main issue of me not being accepted. Like, my GPA is really low. Trust me, it's really low. It's not even minimum for being accepted. But I do not believe that GPA should be the considering um, point when accepting a graduate student. So I emailed them. I emailed to the principal and admission office. And I received the reply after a day. And now I know why I was rejected. And this is a uh, key for being accepted to KAIST for anyone who's applying or who is going to apply for KAIST graduate school. You should really know this. This is apparently the most important point, the key 
point when applying to graduate school, even to business school in KAIS or any other like academic uh, academic research based school in Korea? Are you ready to know <laughs> the answer of why I was rejected? Is because you guys, I was rejected because I didn't apply to a lab. Yes, I. I really wanted to apply to a lab, but related to skin, like uh, like biology, but I couldn't find. That's why I applied for like business, which was related to sustainability, which I had a startup. So I thought I do not need to apply to a lab because I have my own kind of lab. Yeah. So they said, "Hello, dear Mukadas um, we accepted your recommendation letter, and we." If you really want to study in KAIS, because I mentioned that I really want to study in KAIS, they're like, if you really want to study in KAIS, you should find a professor and join his or her lab. So now you know the T. So basically, if you want to study or get accepted to, I knew about this, but I thought it's only for science related to related majors. I was wrong. Now I know that even for business, if I'm applying to KAIST ever again, I should get into professor's lab first. This is really important. Just remember this. You should be accepted to a lab of a professor of your interest, like interest uh, research. You should be accepted before you apply to school because when you uh, are accepted by a professor because when you're accepted by a professor to his or her lab they send kind of some kind of I don't know letter or agreement to school to automatically accept you to graduate school that's all so yeah this is actually it for this video but my plans are still the same I want to do my graduate degree like I really want to study and get my degree related to skin care like not okay forget about skin care related to biology to skin hair treatment like anything related to that or if it is a business then it should be in sustainability circularity like environment things related and now I know that I should apply for a lab before I apply to school and an extra thing that I would consider doing before applying is learning Korean. Since I do not know Korean, I'm going to study Korean. I'm going to take topic test, which is required for other schools if I want to apply, let's say, Seoul National University. So I'm going to take, take topic test, learn my freaking Korean because you still, if you are going to work in a, like if you are going to be in a lab of professor, Korean professor, who will probably have Korean students, who will probably speak Korean most of the time, you should probably know Korean. That's my logic. It's better to be prepared than not. You know, yeah. So if you are going to apply for next uh, session for fall to KAIST or any other Korean school, subscribe to this channel because I will be updating you about what I'm going to do, where I'm going to apply, and how am I preparing for my application. I'm begging for recommendations, writing probably to a professor to be accepted to his lab or her lab, and getting my topic and study plan and everything, stuff like that. So thank you for watching this video. I really think this, this, this video is really helpful for anyone who's applying for graduate school. This is the most helpful video that I've ever seen i haven't seen it i mean recorded i think it is really helpful so please subscribe to this channel like like this video share like share if someone is applying for graduate school share learn from my mistakes i i think i wasted more than uh like application uh fee was 80 bucks like 80 dollars but i think i spent more because uh, because of other things like sending documents and stuff so i would say i i spent around 100 dollars just to make this video joking just to let you know you know thank you for watching and subscribing see you on my next video bye and good luck with your application bye